The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the producers and the individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the staff of the Sun Prairie Media Center, its members or underwriters, the board members of the Media Center Commission, Charter Communications, TDS Telecom, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Welcome to Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbits. The man seated next to me, he's actually a genie who refuses to grant wishes. <laughs> His name is Mike Ross. I like to keep all that cosmetic, or not cosmetic, yeah, sure, that's the kind of genie I was. <laughs> <A> cosmetic, <laughs> cosmetic genie. genie. No, uh, yep. you may not have the I new shade of lipstick. <laughs> uh, you will not have that rouge either, and I have great powers here. <laughs> all, all powerful cosmetic powers. I like how this turns sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I just uh, say words and they <laughs> don't come out. <laughs> yes, and it at all times. Uh, so this week we have uh, a bunch of movies on the marquee. But first, before we get into that, we have our screaming spotlight this week. We turn to Netflix. And what movie are we talking about, well, sir? The new one that they've been uh, chilling lately is mm -hmm. Rim of the World. It's a kind of a throwback to like kid camping movies where they all kind of save the yeah, world right. kind of thing. Um, we have a ragtag bunch of four strange kids all getting together. One is kind of nerd and kind of a scared of everything, but very polite. Um, one is a stereotype of an Asian woman. She doesn't even talk. She knows how to fight. Um, she looks kind of grumpy until a little bit later in the film. We have a um, the kind of a tall, tough guy who probably could be a bully, but he uses his strength and uh, moxie for good. And we have a loud mouth, actual bully who uh, comes from rich parents and kind of poo poos everything and kind of complains he is more of the comedic um, portion of this mm -hmm. ragtag. Gotta group. have that. Um, so they all end up camp. They meet each other at camp. They get separated at camp from the rest of the group. And while that happened, an alien attack happens. Um, <coughs> everybody is scared away. A uh, space shuttle falls out of the sky. The living uh, person that was still in that shuttle gives them a key and says, these codes are going to save the world. You need to get this to Pasadena, Di Pasadena which is 70-something miles away. Mm. These kids go through all the tropes you would expect in a kid's movie. Uh, the nerdy kid never learned how to ride a bike, learns to ride a bike in 10 seconds. Um, <coughs> people open up. They overcome their fears. They share a lot of things. It feels a lot like they stole scenes from Jurassic Park okay. and Breakfast Club and a bunch of other movies. Hey, steal from the good ones. Steal from the good ones. Um, so originality is not a huge thing in this. Um, they do a lot of fun things in here that also don't make sense. Um, and at the same time, you with all these kids in it, it's not really a kid's movie. It's, there's certain parts um, gross. Um, there's some swearing. It kind of throws back to um, Goonies. How uh, everybody back in the 80s, Goonies was a kid's show. But now you watch it now and you're like, ah, some of the language that they use and scenarios that they uh, do mm -hmm. are too much adult for a kid's film. So that's pretty much where you're at with this film. <coughs> um, this is directed by Mick G. Ugh. Am I saying that right? Mick G. Or MCG? Oh, just the worst. Mick G. Um, it starts off as a really fun movie that I felt like I could enjoy, but some of the character motivations just turn on a dime, and you don't know where that's coming from. Um, a lot of the scenarios are cliche to a lot of other movies. Um, it just starts unraveling to be worse and worse mm. and that worse. That sounds like a movie. classic McGee movie, then. It, it very much feels like a B list movie from mm -hmm. the 80s especially at the end where you have this colonel that's telling them hey kids can't do anything and they have this big monologue where kids can do it and we've been this far and there's electricity in the place for the monitor for the guy to talk to them but for some reason we have to go through a video game sequence where they have to crawl places and do little tasks it turns out pretty dumb which is pretty upsetting because at the beginning you were thinking this is going to be a fun movie and then it becomes a thing where you're just like oh i remember seeing that from that movie yeah 
<laughs> That's a um, uh, standard McG fare right there. Which uh, I kind of wish I was forewarned beforehand. <laughs> um, yeah, for a streaming spotlight, I think for the most part we pick out good movies. So yeah. this, this one, um, kind of a stinker. I, I gave it a two. That's unfortunate. Yeah. That's not as good as but what we were hoping for. Here's hoping for next week. Yeah, there's always next week, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this week, let's take a look then mm -hmm. at what we have on the marquee. Uh, and the first movie that I have for us is a film called Booksmart. It is uh, the directorial debut of Olivia Wilde. Um, and uh, it stars two young girls, uh, Amy and Molly, played by Caitlin Deaver and Beanie Feldstein, respectively. And these are two best friends who have spent their entire academic career focused solely on school and being the best at school. Um, they're outsiders from the rest of their classmates. And they've always been very happy being outsiders and being insulated uh, from the rest of their classmates until the last day of school. And they realize that uh, it's coming to an end. And they need to do something that they've never done before. They need to take risks. Um, Amy has a crush on uh, this, this girl who she's not even sure if she's into girls. So she's like, I just, I feel like I have to make a change. You know, everyone's basically like, it's time to hook up. Yeah. <laughs> Molly's got the crush on a guy. And it's like, we, we, we need to go. You know what we need to do? We need to go to the big end of the year party. Mm -hmm. The night before graduation, we got to go to this party. Um, and uh, the night is spent trying to find a party because as the outsiders, they don't even know where people live because mm. they didn't care. <laughs> um, and so it's, uh, you know, them running into one situation after another, um, trying to locate this party. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the, this movie, to me, um, you know, it, it, it felt like this generation's can't hardly wait. To me, oh, okay. it really felt reminiscent of that, and, and uh, you know the the party and everyone enters as a stereotype. I mean, we right down to the we have a sex in the bathroom scene between two people who don't originally like each other at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I, I like about this movie is that you introduce all the different characters as stereotypes. Of here's the hot chick who's mean to everybody. Here's the stoners, here's the jocks, here's the losers, mm -hmm. all these things. And I feel like through the movie, you start to see shades of other things that nobody lives in a stereotype that they start to reveal like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I know you think that I'm this, but I'm going to Stanford because I care about, <laughs> you know, I'm not just what you thought I was, Molly. I'm actually a real person. And mm. I kind of like that in this type of movie, okay. which is oftentimes not the case. Oftentimes people just live in that stereotype. Hmm. I kind of like that part of it. But they go to the, you know, the, the whole movie basically builds to let's get to the party. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, there's some, there's some honest moments between the two friends and uh, things don't go down the way they hope to. Yeah. Um, also stars Skylar Gazzando uh, as Jared, who's the, he's a perfect example of the rich kid who you think is, you know who this kid is. Uh, he's loaded, he's a total jerk to everyone, uh -huh. and then you find out, like, oh, he's got, he's an actual real person behind that. He's just got a front going on. Um, you also have Billy Lord, uh, uh, Carrie Fisher's daughter in this movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, and, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I, I think that it, it th th this is kind of a standard trope of the last night of school, let's mm -hmm. have the big party. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it it doesn't break any new ground as far as that goes. I, um, they were billing it, um, at least some of the advertisements that I had, is supposed to be a lot like a super bad. You have these two I kids. I think that's the easy one. Yeah, yeah, going out there trying to find the party. Um, the problem I had with these is uh, you, you saw something out of these characters I did not. Mm -hmm. I felt like a lot of times they kind of turned around, um, like the, the one kid who everybody thought, you know, had the trans in and mm -hmm. stuff like that. He really didn't have a transformation in character for me until pretty much the end. The l uh, same with a lot of these characters. Um, they stay true to those movies like Superbad and American Pie where in, in they stay the same until the very end, but in between there is a lot of craziness and zaniness. Sure. In this one, I felt like those moments were forced and a lot of times um, very improbable. Uh, there's a situation where 
uh, the girls needed new clothes, and the teacher that is much taller than them and nowhere no close to their size. Nowhere the same body type. <laughs> has go in my trunk. I can carry extra clothes. There we go. They'll and fit you both. They perfectly <laughs> fit you both. And then as I'm leaving, I feel like I'm going to go back to this party and hang out and then mess around with one of my students. Sure. Which, I mean, in extreme comedies, and I think that's what they wanted to have is an extreme comedy of a lot of uh, sex gags and um, drug gags and stuff like that. But I do not think there was much chemistry between the two characters. Really? And everything and see, I felt the exact and, opposite. And way. I felt like that is the huge, a lot of people are reviewing this as a great movie. I did not get the chemistry between those two or think they were zany enough to make all these improbable things like uh, watching porn in the back of your principal's car That's and really accidentally have it go That's through the speakers. Good. That and, would be crazy. And me, I just like, <laughs> my mouth is open. I'm like, but that's not real life. And I know it's not supposed to be real yeah. life, but because I didn't like the main characters or I didn't mm. believe them, I couldn't get into the zaniness. And see, I'm the exact opposite. I, I really, I thought that they felt genuine. I felt like they were actually best friends that, you know, just had each other, mm -hmm. had sleepovers with each other. And, and so I was on that journey with them. And, uh, you know, and I, I was enjoying it. I thought that uh, there were some unexpected laughs in here for me in this what felt stereotypical from the outside. I think it was, a. first off, I think that the trailer was completely misleading as far as yeah. what, to, what to expect. I was mm -hmm. going in expecting a different movie than we got. Um, but it, I felt like it did a good job of giving me laughs within a premise that a lot of high school movies have lived in, mm -hmm. and it found spots that I was enjoying. I like that it was, I like the adult cast. I thought that they were sprinkled in just right. Jason Sudeikis, Will yeah. Forte, Lisa Kudrow, like all these people. I thought that they were just sprinkled in just enough uh, to play some humor off of them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed it. I actually, I, I think you and I can be very different on what we, yeah, our, uh, our scores on and this, but. I, I also thought some of the scenes needed to be edited a little bit better, mm -hmm. to be a little tighter so that the jokes came through without that much of a buildup. Um, I, I would agree. I know there's a couple of moments in there that. And again, if I could get into the zaniness of the movie, I'd probably like that. Because if you look at movies like Super Bad, and it's like, yeah, two cops would not act like that. Mm -hmm. um, one, these kids would not act like that. And you could dismiss it because you really like the characters. And this one, unfortunately, I could not like the characters. I just wa I wanted to get into it. I then that would, be a, that would be a problem if you, yeah. <laughs> you don't care for the two leads. Uh, ultimately, what did you give Booksmart? I gave it a two. Oof. Yeah. Man, we're on different I really did not like this movie. I really did, and it's one of the comedies that I've enjoyed the most in a while. I give it four out of five. Oh. I liked it a lot. I enjoyed that there was, I thought that there was three dimensions to these characters. Listen, I have a feeling we're going to have opposite scores for the rest of the <laughs> You show. think so? Mm -hmm. We'll see. <laughs> Let's get into the next one, though, sir. We have a big Disney movie on the docket. Yeah. What do we have? Oh, we have Aladdin. They remade Aladdin, mm. just like they're remaking all their Everything. cartoon classics. Um, so, uh, basically, if you know Aladdin, which you should because you're watching this show and you love mm -hmm. movies, and Aladdin is considered one of the all-time greatest uh, It was in the animated. renaissance of Disney movies. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fantastic movie. This movie does the exact same. Um, the same plot, a lot of the same jokes, a lot of the same scenarios. They did add a little bit of something different. For one thing, we don't have the late, great Robin Williams. Right. We have Will Smith who is a very funny and charismatic guy. I like him as a genie. I do not like his singing. Um, his, uh, this is a very yeah. musical, and he, Will Smith, he's a great composer. It's funny because he started as a, you know, a rapper, a singer, before he yeah. was an actor. But he, back then, he had um, control over what his range is going yeah. to be. He's trying to recreate songs that were made for musicians or people who could hit these notes, and he could not hit these notes. And that's a minor complaint, mm -hmm. really. Because as a person, he comes off very charismatic. Mm -hmm. um, the blue is a little alarming because of... Um, it's just weird to see on a weird. normal person. But, but uh, besides that, they do transition him into the human quite frequently. Mm -hmm. And Will Smith is funny. There is some things he had led that He was better new. than I was expecting him yeah. to be. And I got some genuine chuckles that I should not have had for a movie that I th should be predictable. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great colors. I did have a problem also with the costume design, too. Yeah. Um, a little bit cartoony. But is that over the point, though? Yeah, <laughs> it is, but it contrasts with everybody who looked normal uh -huh. in this movie. Um, they also added more storyline to the prin princess, where in the, in the animated series or animated movie, there was some 
slightly racist remarks in some of the songs, which they removed, and the princess seemed like all the other Disney princesses where she was a strong character, but she was someone that needed to be She's saved. She's definitely the damsel. And in this one, she is someone who doesn't need to be saved, that's kind of victim of laws, and because of her strength, she changes things around, which makes her now a princess that people should be proud of. I think to she's emulate. the strength of this movie. I think she she's is. definitely the star. I think Aladdin is the third star of this movie. I, yeah, I think you're right. I, I think he very much is in the shadow of Jasmine and the genie. He was pretty much played his part perfectly, whereas it, Will Smith's humor didn't add, but it gave something different. And the princess. Um, she had a couple of new songs, which I don't think meshed well with things that are 30 years old. I liked the one new song that she had, though, basically, of, like, I'm not going to just be the princess you want me to be. I liked that. And they added it in because they want to be able to, you know, first stretch it out, add some depth to her character. Mm -hmm. It also is going to get nominated for Best Original Song. Yeah, and I, I don't think they're bad songs. I just don't think they mesh well with the songs well, that, that were there 30 years ago. And that Aladdin ago. soundtrack, I mean, for, like, for my generation, mm -hmm. that is, like, a legendary soundtrack. Like, sure. when growing up. When that came out, everyone was singing that. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's got a lot of great songs. I believe, believe uh, a brave new you, uh, world was playing over and over again yeah. at my uh, high school yeah. um, the prom thing, which I wore a Marcus Theater stuff. There's a fact. <laughs> nice. <for you. laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, this movie was it, it. It very much was a live version of the animated feature. They, uh, you know. Outside of Jasmine, I thought she stood out, both the actress and the role. Mm -hmm. And it was Naomi Scott who played her, and I thought she was really good. Um, I thought Will Smith was good. I was expecting it kind of rough with him because it's tough to channel or even try and surpass or copy what Robin Williams did. Yeah. And I think he was in and out of that. I think that there were moments where they're like, just do that. Just do what Robin Williams did. But they also gave him some emotional moments between he and Aladdin, which I thought uh -huh. were great. I think those were the strength of the movie, was every time they broke away and gave you a little something new that wasn't in the animated, I, th I was like, I like this now. Yeah, and I forgot, they did add a kind of a romantic thing where mm -hmm. the genie fell in love with the handmaid, yeah. and I thought that was a very cute, watching the genie be shy yeah. and uncomfortable awkward and, and awkward, and I thought that was really kind of cool. Yeah, my, my biggest gripe with this movie is, I, first off, I thought that uh, Mena Musad, who plays Aladdin, was just kind of there. Really? I don't think he like popped off the screen in any way. I thought that he was just basically trying to portray a cartoon character. And I thought the same thing. And but that's really not that bad. Right, but it doesn't make it stand out for me because you know what? I really love the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And if I'm given the choices, I'll take the original source material yeah. as opposed to a guy who's just trying to be that. Yeah. Um, and you know, the music was strong and everything. And I just thought that you know, Aladdin as himself was just kind of there. And I felt like a lot of this movie felt like they were, like, constricted by what they were able to do because you have to do, you have to know, you have to make that movie. You have mm -hmm. to make this. Yeah. And I, I wanted it to breathe a little more than it did. Um, a lot of it was lovely. And it's Guy Ritchie kind of writing the ship a little bit from yeah. his previous work. When I saw Guy, I'd forgotten that Guy Ritchie was directing this movie. So mm -hmm. I'm watching... And when it comes up, first off, this guy puts his name in the opening credits twice. It's twice in the opening credits says directed by Guy Ritchie. Yeah. All right, dude. But then the first time I saw it, I'm like, oh, no, it's Guy Ritchie. I just watched King Arthur last year. With and the slowdown. Like, oh, yeah, God, I don't want that. And this one, I'm like, okay, Guy Ritchie. I was waiting for some of those moments of his, and I really didn't get it that he was really restrained. Disney put the shackles on him. There's one thing that, I mean, he's really famous for slowing down yeah. his uh, movies. And this one, he did a bunch of speed-up scenes, yeah. which made it look like Keystone Cops, sure. which I did not really appreciate. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? The mouth is not going with what they're doing. There's kind of jitterbuggering around. Mm -hmm. It looked weird. But, I mean, I guess, you know, they told him probably, hey, no more of that slowdown yeah, stuff. We're going to do something that. different. So he went, oh, we're well, just going to make a Keystone Cop. That, everybody wants that. We're, I mean. And I don't know if that's his voice. I'm just throwing that it's, in. It's spot on. <laughs> we also got the trailer for the Maleficent 2. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Jungle Book coming Which out. Looks fantastic. There's like, there's this, they're just going to keep rolling these and rolling these and rolling these. And for me, I think this is kind of somewhere in the upper middle of these Disney movies so yeah. far. I love to see Disney. I mean, they got enough money. I know it's very expensive, but 
one more pan animated movie. And it's been so long <laughs> since we've seen one. Princess and the Frog was the last one. That was a long time ago. It was. Is that almost ten years old? Oh, it's, I think it's more than that. Yeah. But so if I would love them to actually, instead of taking a risk of making their people animated films, mm-hmm. just do one more animated film. Right. Just Why wow not? us. Wow us with everything they can do. I, w- I would love that. Um, w- before we go with this, uh, what did you give Aladdin? I give it a 3.5. I really enjoyed myself, and I feel like I'm kind of being contrast of last week when I was like, oh, that movie was exactly like the first <laughs> yeah, yeah, one, right. and, I, <laughs> and I hated it for it. And this but one, you enjoyed this. I enjoyed it. I feel like they cleaned up some loose ends that they had some problems mm-hmm. with with the last one. So I enjoy the animated more, but I really enjoyed this one. Yeah, I gave it 3 out of 5. I think it was okay. good enough. It was actually better than I was expecting it to be for certain parts of it. I just wish Aladdin would have been something more special. Probably the best review give of a Guy Ritchie film <laughs> yeah, in quite a long is. time. <laughs> Since the first year like Holmes. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, let's uh, move on to the next film we have on the marquee. It is Brightburn from director David Yarovesky. Yara- uh, stars Elizabeth Banks and David Denman um, as a couple living in Kansas who a baby comes hurtling down uh, in a spaceship and lands in their farm field in Kansas, and this baby might have special powers. This is very much purposefully the uh, Superman story. Oh, yeah. Uh, their baby, uh, the, the little boy, Brandon Breyer, uh, played by Jackson A. Dunn, grows up, and as a 12-year-old, um, suddenly, you know, they have the, they have his, his spaceship buried under the barn. Suddenly that spaceship activates him. It comes to life and, like, flips a switch on him and activates him into uh, discovering his powers very quickly. And in discovering these powers, he soon quickly realizes, oh, I'm here to destroy the world. Mm-hmm. This is my mission. And, uh, and he does. And this movie, it purposely plays out as a Superman tale, only it is a strong horror movie within this construct Very of a superhero strong. movie. Um, way more horrific, actually, than I was planning on. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely not something you should bring your kids no. to. No. Because this is not a superhero movie. There are some really horrific kill scenes in this. Very. There's one scene I'm not a fan of close-up eye trauma. Ah. And w- between John Wick and this, I got two of those now in the last week, and I have to look away when that happens. Like, oh, pulling glass out of eyeballs? No, thank you. And it's not that is the only scene. No. There's a jaw scene a that jaw was scene, really yeah. bad, too. Um, there was a lot of bad scenes all the way through. Yeah, it was actually really surprising to me. Um, and, you know, I, I thought that this kid, Jackson A. Dunn, I thought he did a really great job of showing the different sides of this child. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he plays sympathetic. He plays sinister. He plays kind of creepy. Yeah. All within the same scene sometimes. Mm-hmm. And you can see the change come over him. I was, I was fairly impressed by this kid who I had thought I'd never seen him before until I was told by someone last night that um, he is also uh, plays the young version of Ant-Man in Endgame when he's going, when he's flashing like old man, baby, young oh, kid. Yeah? He's the young kid version I, of Ant-Man for I half a second. I can't really blame you for not writing I know, I know. Well, <laughs> a friend of mine who saw these back to back. Ah. Like, hey, there he is. Kill him now. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, he's got these powers and his parents. Here's my, here's my issue with this movie. Um, that Elizabeth Banks plays, perhaps, in my mind, the single dumbest mother in the history of film. I like David Demon as the dad who realizes very quickly that I think my kid is uh, dangerous. Mm-hmm. I think that he's responsible for some of these things. Elizabeth Banks, despite knowing that this child came from a different planet, is like, mm, I don't know. I mean, he's human, right? I forgot that he's an alien. He's just a kid. Give him a chance. I think she was playing more of the Martha role. They really wanted to replicate the Superman thing. Yeah. And I have a feeling, you know, Martha would do the same thing. Her boy is very Im- – this Why is Why did you say that trying. name? Sorry, it's it not <laughs> – very good. <laughs> I get that. I'm sorry. And Martha was ex- – her son was more important than anything else. She was a very protective mother who didn't have the choice of but being able to birth but her But she own. didn't repress the fact that Superman, that Clark Kent – came from somewhere else, whereas Elizabeth Banks' character Mm -hmm. seems to have repressed that idea that there's no way that my kid could do something like this. He's just a normal 12-year-old kid. Yeah. And I'm like, what? why? And especially when the husband's like, oh, no, this kid might be a monster. I sympathized with her, but I don't think she was the right actor to do this job. Um, She usually does more comedic roles. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of comedy in this movie. 
not a lot of comedy <laughs> at all. There was a couple of chuckle moments, but they weren't appropriate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Very inappropriate. Um, yeah, that's uh, Elizabeth Banks. She needed the the character to play Tori, the mother. Um, needed to be more believable. Mm-hmm. They could be gullible. She could be sympathetic and caring, but at the same time, it needed to really be believable. Yeah. And I wasn't getting that. I wasn't getting Elizabeth that out of her. Banks. What did you end up giving Brightburn? I gave it three point five. I really liked it. I like horror films. I love this spin. Mm-hmm. I love how it kind of sets it up where we might see a dark universe in this universe. Yeah. Um. But it all depends on how much money you make. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half as well. I, I, I was very happy with it. Very good. Uh, let's take a look back real quick for our movie throwback. 2001, we have a movie that stars a couple of snarky teen girls like mm-hmm. we did in uh, Booksmart. Uh, it is also based off uh, off some comic books, uh, much like this. Which is really surprising when you watch it because yeah. it's not like a comic book. Not much. Uh, directed by Terry Zwigoff, it's Ghost World, starring Thora Birch as Enid. Uh, Scarlett Johansson as Rebecca. Uh, these are two very weird best friends that are about to face the prospects of the future after high school. They're going to move in together. And uh, they, the one of their main things they like to do is people watch and kind of pass judgment and kind of mess with people because they're so much cooler than mm-hmm. everyone else. Uh, and they start messing with a, a this sad sack, Seymour, played by Steve Buscemi. Um, but Enid becomes kind of curious by this odd, sad fella, and she begins to kind of get drawn in by him. Uh, Rebecca, meanwhile, is ready to move on to her adult life, uh, despite Enid's kind of refusal to go on to adult life. And uh, Enid starts to see Rebecca as kind of uh, becoming a normal and not an outsider like her. Um, and uh, you've got a lot of interesting characters in here. Brad Renfro, Josh, the guy who works at the, uh, the gas station they attend all the time. Uh, David Sheridan is my favorite character in this movie. He is Doug the shirtless guy at the gas station with the, with the mullet and the nunchucks <laughs> and he is hilarious for no reason i don't know why he's in this but i love it um this movie's got a lot of really interesting characters it's got a great soundtrack and this is the movie that i discovered scarlett johansson in really the first thing i'd ever seen her in yeah i i didn't i still don't recognize her <laughs> you don't no <laughs> I'm she looking at her. I don't see it. I, I know it's her. I, I just. I came to this movie for Thora Birch and Steve Buscemi. I left with Scarlett Johansson in my heart. Um, wow, she's so young. She's very young, actually. Um, they're all teenagers. Look at this guy, Doug. He's <laughs> just, come on, man. Love that I feel like tan I know, line. That's I feel like I awesome. know that guy. Um, it's, a, it's a really fun movie. It's a, it's a strange movie. And the soundtrack is awesome. I it did is. fall in love with that bluesy uh, yeah. song that uh, Steve Pacimi. Yeah. Or I'm totally butchering that. But, um, yeah. He's I a weird, weird fella in this, yeah, in this and everything. Yeah, he plays a weird. Like, hey, we need a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> What's Buscemi up to? Is he going to be in a Quentin Tarantino film? He's it seems always like in he's, it, right? Yeah, he should be he somewhere in there, in the new one. Uh, let's take a look ahead, sir. What is coming out the weekend of June 7th? Uh, we have four movies that weekend. The first one is the final movie in this X-Men universe. Dark Phoenix is coming out. I thought the last one was going to be the last one. I have thought that for a while. Uh, I have zero excitement for this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the last one before uh, Disney takes over the franchise and oh. does what they want with it. Okay. Uh, we also have Late Night starring Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling. Emma Thompson is a late night talk show host who's about to lose her job. They have Mindy Kaling as her head writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have The Secret Life of Pets 2. Uh-huh. I agree. <laughs> and then we have uh, the new A24 film, The Last Black Man in San Francisco. This trailer has me so excited about a guy going back to San Francisco trying to recover his family's old home and realizing that it's not the city that he used to live in. Hmm. It's A24, so it's A24 gotta be good. is usually pretty good. It's gotta be good. There's, there's more wins than losses. I agree with that. Uh, l- before we leave you, of course, we have to thank our sponsor, Marcus Theaters, The Palace here in Sun Prairie. Thank you for sponsoring our program, I have been in there, I feel like, more than I've been home recently. I was there all day today, and <laughs> it's worth it. It's, it's worth, worth it. It's totally <laughs> worth it. Yeah, it was great, especially over the holiday weekend, man. They had all kinds of great deals. Mm-hmm. Free popcorn. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Load mm-hmm. up my bucket. And, uh, of course, if you don't know about Tuesdays, $5 Tuesdays for their movies, free popcorn, discounted on pizzas, and a bunch of other stuff. All kinds so of things. Those are the days we tend to try to <laughs> you not won't see me show there on up Tuesday. because it's very popular. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but definitely uh, check it out if you haven't. Definitely check it out. Next week, sir, we're going to be talking about such films as Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Looking forward to that. Ma. Looking forward to that. And Rocket Man. Yeah, I love those. Those are our Ma. three, as <laughs> well as uh, you know, a fun, uh, fun little throwback and a streaming spotlight when we get to it. That's all coming next week. But until that time, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.